And like Senator Rubio, I better take my water first. Uh, th this, is, this is very exciting uh, for me, for my wife Beth, because uh, <coughs> we were friends of uh, Carla and uh, David Cohen. We feel we were here at the creation of politics and prose, the incredible job that they did, and the idea that there would be a second act, and that it would be uh, so creative uh, and uh, and so exciting uh, under Brad and Lisa is, is just means a lot a lot to us. I'm very very pleased that uh, you would come out on Valentine's Day. <laughs> I love you all. <laughs> and in fact, I brought uh, I brought pens that are red. I, I will sign all books with red pens and put in a heart and a, and, a, and an X O. Hugs and kisses, as as well, if 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 you if you wish them. Um, the 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 ancient history uh, behind this book has been uh, largely told uh, by Brad and, and his introduction. I did come to Brookings in 1972 after being on the White House staff of two presidents. Obviously, I was going to be the presidency man. In 1976, I wrote a book called Organizing the Presidency, which basically said all I wanted to say at that time, and so I had to look around for another subject. <laughs> and I decided I would do uh, the Washington press. Press is what we used to call, uh, it's called the media now. It's, we, we called it the press at the time. And um, it was a survey of 450, and then got more elaborate. Now, what is terribly interesting to me, this is really very exciting. A young woman came up to me a few minutes ago and she had this book, the original book, because she had just had it reprinted in the back of the shop. I, I, by the way, it looks better than the original. <laughs> I am very excited. And she told me who she was. And she was one of the five interns in the summer of 1978 who did the basic study. Diane Charna, she was, she was from uh, Stanford, uh, she was the odd woman out, the others were all from Harvard, Can't so and she told me how it changed her life, maybe you'll get up and tell the, the crowd, but she became a writer uh, after, after that uh, as well. I, wa I, want, I have several of my interns here now, and I just listened to that story, uh, from, uh, that, that's, that's how life goes, and it was, and um, so, this, so it got me so interested that I decided that book would be, I would call it uh, news work, it would be the first of a series, and it's been, it has been such exciting. The second book was the, uh, took inside, spent a year inside five government press offices, uh, White House, State Department, Pentagon, Food and Drug Administration, uh, Department of Transportation, and you never know when you write a book. Uh, while I'm there with the with the department at the Department of Transportation with the secretary and the snow is falling and we look out the window and a plane has crashed into the 14th Street Bridge. You remember that. And we're there and I am there to write everything that, a, that the government does in return to a crisis. That's the way it goes. Uh, again, we, we did uh, one on the, on the House of, on the Senate first. So it's a year wandering around inside the, the Senate just uh, senators walk a lot, you know. They they have to go from th their offices to the Capitol to so forth and so. Forth. And I found that if I just instead of making appointments with them, if I just walked with them, I could get all of the interviews I, I wanted. And I just introduce myself and say I'm writing a book about the press. And I say, Senator, you know, um, the reporters are going to put an adjective in front of your name. What adjective would you like in front of your name? They had never been asked that question before, so they stopped and thought about it, and sometimes the conversation was, went on for 15 or 20 minutes. You know what adjective they chose that they wanted more than any in front of their name? Hardworking. <laughs> that's something, hardworking John Melcher, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so we, we had wonderful times. We, we did another on the house, uh, and then Beth and I had an opportunity to basically go around the world and do one on foreign correspondence, how they cover... Uh, cover the rest of the world for the United States. I can remember being with uh, John Pomfret from the, from the uh, Washington Post in, in um, Istanbul. He had just come in uh, from uh, Kurdistan for the weekend. I said, John, uh, what's, what's your, your trick for staying alive? And he said, um, don't wash your car. Oh, 
John, I, I asked you for a survival technique, and you said, don't wash your car. He said, yes, if anybody's going to place a bomb under it, there'll be fingerprints on it. Don't wash your car. We had a wonderful time. So obviously, having done that on uh, how we cover uh, the world, then I did through their eyes how the rest of the world covers us. And we now reach the point in 19, 2005 where uh, there would be a final book. Clearly, after all these books, I'm, the final book is supposed to be the future. But I have the faintest idea what the future of the media is going to be. So instead, I went back to the beginning. Uh, by now, I'm also a professor at GW, so beside my interns at Brookings, I had these wonderful energetic students. And we went out and we found 90% of these 450. But I should say, by the way, that they were in 19 states beyond the Washington area. They were in England, they were in France, they were in Italy, they were in New Zealand, they were in Australia. 283 we actually uh, did transcribed interviews with. All of this material, by the way, will be given to the Library of Congress, will be in the manuscript division. Future generations can go back, look at how it was now, compare it uh, for, for how it will be uh, in, the, in the future. Um, so I, one thing I should advise you, warn you about, this isn't like your college yearbook, 50th anniversary yearbook, class of, <laughs> class of 1978, because these people were all different. The oldest was 80, the youngest was 21. What they had in common was that at a moment in 1978, they were all in Washington covering national government for US commercial operations. And that made it a little tricky in how you would organize it. So basically, this book is a series of discrete essays on different, as, uh, on different parts of this mix. And then the end, we bring it all together, and we count these people one by one by one and reach a conclusion, which makes this the first book that is about career patterns in journalism. So let me start. The first book, the first chapter, would be uh, the World War II generation, the GI Bill people who came here. And it was a very clear pattern. They went out someplace to Omaha, to Des Moines. They served their time. They were brought to Washington. They spent the rest of their careers in Washington. They retired, not that they had to, but they did at that time at 65. That's, that's, that's what it looked like. Uh, wrong book. Pick up where we are in the right book. Uh, I'll give you just, I'm going to give you snippets from each of these uh, particular uh, sections to get a, a feel from it. This is uh, in that first chapter about uh, Darwin uh, Olofsson uh, of the uh, Omaha World Her Herald and how he came to Washington in 1950. He had been assigned in Omaha to cover the first big snowstorm uh, of the season, and so he went out to get some image of the children playing in the white flakes and so forth. But he found that they were all cold and shriveling in an in a elementary school playground. So he was an enterprising reporter. What he did was he started a snowball fight. And the kids loved that. But as soon as he got back to, the, uh, to his office, uh, he told us, before I could get back in the newsroom, the school principal had called our executive editor <laughs> and accused me of threatening the health and welfare of an entire new generation. Shortly thereafter, the executive editor called me in and said he thought I would do better in an unstable environment. He was sending me to Washington. <laughs> so that's, that was the first. Now, uh, if you move on to women, this becomes a, a, a difficult and a different chapter because there were only 20% of the original group were women. You could not do the same thing of just measuring them. So our, our, our brave researchers went out and kept interviewing women right through till we got a pattern uh, of, uh, of, of women uh, from 1978 uh, to the present. Now, um, let's get to, this is, this is what it really sort of looked like in the beginning. Uh, and it's pretty dismal. Um, OK. Uh, this, this, is, um, this is Judy Woodruff. And she graduates from Duke in 1968, and she says, my spring break, I went to Atlanta. I interviewed with all three affiliate news directors. Two of them barely gave me the time of, of day. 
The third, an ABC affiliates news director, this was a station that was doing one newscast over the weekend. He said, I could use a good